I now hand the conference over to Heyman Bakshi, Head Investor Relations, Jubilin Ingrivia Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being with us on our Q4 FI21 earnings conference call. Please note effective first February 2021, the life science ingredients business of Jubilant Life Sciences Limited demerged into Jubilant Ingrivia Limited. I would like to remind you that some of the statements made on the call today could be forward-looking in nature and a detailed disclaimer in this regard has been included in our press release as well as earnings release. On the call today, we have Mr. Sham Bhartia, Chairman, Mr. Hari Bhartia, Co-Chairman, Mr. Rajesh Shrivastav, CEO and Managing Director, Mr. Prakash Bisht, CFO of Jubilant Gravia, and Mr. Arvind Chokani, Group CFO. I now invite Mr. Sham Bhartia to share his comments. Over to you, sir. I would request Mr. Sham Bhatia to please unmute yourself from your mobile phone. Sorry. <clears throat> Thank you, Heman. Good evening, everyone. I hope you all are in good health and keeping safe. We are glad to announce that we performed well during FY21 despite COVID-19 related challenges. We reported significant growth in our revenues EBITDA and back in FY21. All our sites remain operational throughout the pandemic and initiatives were taken to mitigate COVID-19 impact. Supplies of raw material, availability of logistics were ensured for uninterrupted servicing of our customers and strict COVID protocols were followed at all our sites and offices for safety of our employees. We also take this opportunity to thank all our employees who have worked tirelessly across all our plants and offices to ensure continuity in company's operation while continuing to serve our global customers. Demand scenario in all our business segments continue to be strong as communicated to you earlier during our last communication, all growth plans are going on track and our FY22 CAPEX investment is estimated to be in the range of rupees 300 to 350 crores. The team is continuing to work towards meeting the plans. I'm happy to inform you that during the last year, the company reduced net debt by rupees 594 crores. The company continues to focus on debt reduction over the coming year. We would like to inform you that the board of directors of the company at its meeting held today has recommended a dividend of 35% for the year ended March 31st, 2021. With this, I would now hand over to Rajesh to discuss about the business in detail. Thank you, Mr. Vartya. A very good evening to all of you. At the outset, I hope you all and your loved ones are safe and healthy. I would like to welcome you all for joining this very first quarterly investor call of Civil and Israelia Limited. It gives me immense pleasure to report a stellar performance of Sigland in Gravia for the Q4 as well as FY21 in all the parameters. Revenue during the quarter was 1,078 crore, which is growth of 31% year on year, driven by 17% growth in specialty chemicals, 22% in nutrition and health solutions, and 46% growth in life science chemical business segment. EBITDA during the quarter was Rs. 203 crore, which is up 101% year on year, led by significant growth in life science chemical business and also in specialty chemicals as well as nutrition and health solution business. Now, let me take you through the updates on all our three business segments. Specialty chemicals. During the quarter, our specialty chemicals business has seen strong demand across all our products due to better demand from pharma, 
as well as agrochemical industry segment. Business continue to see higher demand resulting into revenue growth of 17% and EBITDA by 9% during the quarter on year-on-year basis. Business has delivered strong performance during FY21 with revenue growth of 2% and EBITDA growth of 13% along with improved EBITDA margin of 23.9%, which is 243 basis points higher than FY20. Input prices as well as logistic costs during the quarter have gone up sharply, which was successfully passed on by price increase of our finished products. Withdrawal of NEIS benefits on exports sale by the government have impacted our EBITDA as well as margin during the quarter. Due to paraquat ban in Brazil and Thailand, trading prices were lower, however, have stabilized during the end of the quarter. On the other side, since pridin and beta is produced as co-product, due to paraquat ban as expected, we saw reduction in pridin beta production globally, and hence tightening of beta availability in marketplace. This has resulted into improvement in beta pickling prices. During FY21, specialty chemical business has commercialized six new products and has more than 30 new products in pipeline, which are to be launched in next two to three years. Demand of our specialty chemical segment continues to be stable. Our first phase of diketin projects is on track, and we expect to start our commercial production from this plant sometime during Q3 FY22. Our CDM of business is getting better traction in demand of existing as well as new products. Business is working to maximize capacity utilization through de bottlenecking. Nutrition and health, sol- health solution business. During the quarter, as the market started opening up in different parts of the world, especially in Europe and USA, business has seen strong demand across all parts of the world. Due to strong demand, the business has recorded revenue growth of 22% and EBITDA by 9% during the quarter year-on-year basis. About 80% of revenue of nutrition and health solution business is from exports. And withdrawal of MEIS benefits on exports by the government has impacted our EBITDA margin during the quarter. The business has delivered a strong performance during FY21 with revenue growth of 17.3% and EBITDA growth of 37% along with improved EBITDA margin of 20.7%, which is 300 basis points higher than that of FY20. Pandemic created some supply chain challenges in terms of less availability of containers and ships, which has led to increase in global ocean freight costs for Europe and North America. However, due to strong relationship with shipping companies, and container suppliers, the business was successful in placing the products to our global customers on time in full. Though the demand in animal nutrition segment was subdued due to pandemic, specifically in poultry, poultry segment, the business has successfully achieved higher volumes of choline chloride and our specialty free mixes. Demand of nutrition and health segment continue to be stable. Raw material and logistic costs continue to be higher, and business is trying to pass on this through price increase of finished products. Life science chemical business. We saw very strong performance in life science chemical business segment with 13% growth on revenue and 138% growth on EBITDA, along with margins of 13.6% in FY21. Business has seen a strong demand of acid and hydride in almost all the segments. In pharmaceutical, we can see surge in demand of paracetamol due to ongoing pandemic resulting into a higher demand of acetonidride. Due to higher demand of products, the capacity utilization of all our five plants and specifically acetonidride in three locations for Gajarala, Mira, and Bharuj has gone up. Our new capacity at Bharuj, which got commissioned in FY20, has come very handy in serving this increased demand. Though this business has faced significant input cost increase due to much higher price of acetic acid, utility costs and logistic costs, it was successfully passed on completely. 
Business has achieved a significant improvement in process efficiency, thereby reducing conventional norms of raw material and utility, along with some capacity debottlenecking of through Lean Six Sigma. This has led to variable cost reduction and improvement in EBITDA as well as margin. During the quarter, global production of HP Connect Drive has been impacted due to the pandemic and other reasons. While the company was able to offer higher volume to the market. Which has created a favorable market condition of ST and Android, leading to higher price realization and improvement in EBITDA and margin. Demand of ethyl acetate was also strong, specifically due to higher consumption of inks and adhesives used to manufacture packing materials, which is in high demand due to increase in online purchases of during pandemic. Higher input prices have impacted working capital of small scale producers. of the high state which has resulted into creating a favorable market condition for us leading to higher price realization and improvement in ebitda and margin business has demonstrated higher level of agility and resilience in servicing all our loyal customers globally on time in full using its strong distribution channels differentiated supply chain during this unprecedented time of pandemic during the quarter sales of newly launched products propionic and hydride has been impacted due to pandemic and we would see better traction in the coming quarters in our life science chemical business st can hydride market situation seems to be favorable on account of higher demand and lower availability due to restricted production output in certain part of the world with this i now hand over to mr prakash to discuss the financials thank you rajesh a very good evening and i thank everyone for taking out time and joining us on our first ever quarterly earning conference of Cleveland in Gravia i hope you are all in good health and keeping safe i would like to start with explaining the basis of preparation of performance numbers for q4 and fy21 on continuing basis during the quarter and for the year ended march 21 consolidated financial results of the company comprises results only for two months operation that is february and march after the demerger became effective however to provide the comprehensive picture of operation of the company on continuing basis we have presented the results for q4 fy21 and fy21 in the investor dash and also on this call by combining the relevant portion of the lsi segment results from the published results of jubilant pharma limited and published results of jubilant in gravia in the following manner the results for 10 months of operation that is from 1st april 2020 to 31st march 2021 and previous year year numbers have been taken from the reported discontinued operation of lsi segment in the jubilant farmova results the same information is also disclosed in now 10 of our consolidated and stand alone results The results for two months from 1st February and 31st March has been taken from the original results of the company. Revenue from operation uh, during the quarter was 1,078 crores as compared to 823 crores in Q4 last year. Reported EBITDA during the quarter was 203 crores as compared with 101 crores in Q4 FY20. Its margin standing strong and 18. Point eight percent versus to twelve point three percent in Q4 FY20. Revenue from operations during full year FY21 was at three thousand four hundred and ninety-one crores, as compared with three thousand one hundred and seventy-nine crores last year. EBITDA during full year FY21 was at six hundred twenty-seven crores, as compared. With 409 crores in FY20, with a margin of 17.9 percent versus 12.9 in FY20. Depreciation and amortization expenses during the quarter was at 32 crores versus 31 crores in Q4 FY20. Finance cost during the quarter was significantly lower at 12 crores versus 24 crores in FY20. A reduction of 61 percent year on year. Reported PAT during the quarter was at 95 crores after reduction of exceptional income of 13 crores, as again rupees 48 crores in Q4 FY 
twenty. And pass for full FY twenty one was three hundred and sixty crores against two hundred twenty crores in FY twenty. The company witnessed witnessed significant deleverage in FY twenty one, whereby its gross debt reduced by seven forty seven crores in FY twenty one, and the net debt reduced by five hundred and ninety four crores. The net debt is two hundred two hundred and thirty one crores as of thirty first March twenty one. Net debt to EBITDA now stands at zero point seven times. We generated healthy, healthy operating cash flow, so capex uh, and interest payments during the year. Capital expenditure during the year was under twenty two crore. With this, I would like to conclude our opening remarks. We will now be happy to address any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Vida from Abacus Asset Manager. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congratulations for good set of numbers. Uh, so, just want to understand in terms of the uh, subsidy that they have incorporated. Uh, what is the rational there, and are we going to incorporate the whole specialty segment within the LSI into the subsidiary? Uh, Rahul, uh, in our investor call in March, we have informed that we are trying to get into agro active business, and uh, at Baruch, uh, we had an opportunity to open this new company to start agro active business. So that's why we have incorporated. It. So we have already intimated that this this business we will be we will be planning uh, capex investment this year, and uh, the business will be ready after 12 to 18 months. So that is what this subsidy will do, and nothing else. So all other business remains as it is. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Sir, and uh, the capex that we have mentioned for 300 to 350 crores, by when it is expected to come online? So these capexes are for this current year. So this is the capex outflow for the current year, and there are various uh, uh, projects which are part of this capex investment. Oh yeah. So but but when it will start generating revenue, sir? So any capex which you take, it takes at least twelve uh, months, twelve to sixteen months. So I'd say some uh, capexes will start generating revenue at later part of this year. And uh, most of this will come into the next year. Sure, sure. Fair point, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rakesh Junjunwala from Rare Enterprises. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Congrats for a good result. The question: Thank How much effort tax asset you have in the balance sheet? Rakesh. Yeah. So, sir, uh, we have uh, a net credit of 160 crores. So, you will be continuing on this 33 percent rate of tax for a piece of time. Yes, sir. At least for uh, the next two years, we will continue to have uh, this old tax regime till the time we utilize our uh, net tax credit. So, during this period, our PMA charge will be in the range of 30 percent, but the cash tax will be only 17.5. And what is your net debt as on 31st March? 431 crore. So you hope, hope to substantially reduce it this year? So this year uh, we have a good uh, cash flow, but we also have a capex lined up uh, for about 300 to 350 crores. After adjusting the capex, at least we don't hope to increase it. And what is the area in which you are making this expansion? Hello. Uh, sorry, sir, I could not. Yeah, yeah, just, uh, not. In which in which area are you uh, entering this capex? So, uh, sir, we have we have 
inform this in the march mainly we are investing in specialty chemical business which is dye clean agro active and cdmo business we are also investing in one of additional anhydride plant which we had informed in march and some investment in our nutraceutical business so these are the key investment plans which we had indicated in the march and that is what we are going to follow we are now also working at full capacity or there is scope to further increase production from the existing capacity our plants currently are working in the range of 85 to 90% capacity utilization but we continue to do the rebottlenecking and minor expansion of existing plants based on the demand so that that goes on parallelly to this new investment so and with that only we keep taking the increased demand scenario of various points so that continues so and you have now incorporated one subsidiary you know so all the subsidy yes. going to so i just replied prior to your question that this subsidiary is incorporated to do the business of agro actives uh, as i mentioned one of our investment plan is to enter into agro active because we are producing already lot of specialty value added intermediates for agrochemical companies now there is a good traction for agro active business so we are going to launch agro active business through this subsidiary so we are going to invest in a plant which will be a multi purpose plant where we will produce agro active and also we will do some agro active cdmo business so why are you making a separate subsidiary for that Yeah. Because, yeah. because the tax advantage because you get safety you get a lower tax because of the new company benefit sir no and what is the investment and this is in the subsidy so in in, in in let's say two to three years origin this should be about about 200 crore 150 to 200 crore investment and where are you putting up the plant in bharuch in our uh, special economy zone okay so thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of vini kala from monarch net network sorry monarch network please go ahead hi thanks for the opportunity at the outset congratulations on excellent set of numbers uh, sir can you please articulate on the pricing scenario and asset allocation how long can the current pricing last and uh, and uh, what percentage of our asset allocation business do we deal uh, with our clients on a long term basis so uh, as i explained in the speech that the demand of acetic anhydride is continuing to be good today uh, so we don't see any uh, any erosion in prices at the same time you know prices are also very volatile so so i hope that the current scenario of pricing and also the demand continue for some time definitely okay uh sir yeah sir so also like what you mentioned is that uh, we will be we will start servicing uh, the dietitian uh, clients i think q3 fy22 onwards so sir where is the plant uh, from what plant are we servicing from So, so we have made an investment uh, in the FY21. We have committed investment, which will come uh, in, uh, in production by FY22 Q3, and uh, this is where we will produce the dietitian derivative at Gajrola. At Gajrola, yes, Gajrola. Okay, okay, sir. So also, sir, like uh, uh, this is over and above the like the capex that we've already done for dietitian based products is over and above. Uh, uh, incremental capex that we have mentioned in our uh, March presentation. No, this is the same capex. The second phase will come after that. Okay. So, and uh, like, what would be the peak sales uh, in in dieting that we can do, and also if you can, you know, articulate a bit on the opportunity and pricing uh, in the segment because uh, of our uh, entry and and you know, uh, this is already well contested as a segment. That is the domestic part of it. So, can you please elaborate more on that? yeah so I, i think i have clarified this in our last call also that uh, when we are looking at dietary derivatives india is one of the market but uh, we are also looking at dietary derivatives for global market so of course india demand is growing we will try to capture that as well as our value added derivatives of dietary will be focused for the customer requirement outside india as well 
ओके सर बट लाइक इन इन डोमेस्टिक मार्केट आई वी एंटीसिपेटिंग एनी काइंड ऑफ लाइक प्राइसिंग प्रेशर बिकॉज ऑफ द इनकम पेंट देर आर मोर इम्पोर्ट्स देन आवर प्रोडक्शन लाइकली टू बी इम्पोर्ट्स आर हायर देन आवर प्रोडक्शन इज वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट लाइकली टू बी ओके सो वॉट यू आर इम्पोर्ट्स रेजिडेंट फ्रॉम लोकल कंपनीज ओके सो माई लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज ऑन दिस रेडिंग सर गिवेन दैट ADD was removed by the Chinese. Uh, ADD was removed by China. So, so I mean, what is the outlook on the EBITDA margins and growth front? Because some of the smaller players are reporting say very good EBITDA margins. You are talking about pyridine or specifically chemical aspects? Pyridine, specifically pyridine. So pyridine, these are together. I mean, as you as I explained in my speech, that pyridine prices have been under pressure, but now. Pyridine prices are stabilizing. We have seen in last couple of quarters the prices are getting better, and along with pyridine, beta prices are also getting better. So that's what what we are saying is right. The overall situation of profitability in pyridine beta is is better. Okay, sir. So I'll I'll come back to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we would request you to please limit your question to two at a time. Should you have a follow-up question, please please join the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagraj from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for the numbers. So the first question is uh, the current expansion that we are doing. Uh, how much in how much time we will be able to utilize the incremental capacity optimally? So in this year, you have already mentioned that we'll be doing close to about uh, 300 to 350 crores of capex. So for how many years this particular capex will be uh, utilized from our plant capacity perspective? Thank you. So usually, whenever we make any investment in capex, uh, the mostly it is for the increased demand. So uh, within let's say 12 months period or 15 months period. We try to see the utilization of 60-70 percent of our capacity. So I would say in two years' time, probably most of the cases. In some cases it's early, in some cases it will be more. But on an average, one and a half to two years, the capacities are utilized. Ah, uh, sure, understood. Also, the second question is in terms of individual segment margin. So in, we have seen that last year there been increase in input costs as well as the product prices. So, on a sustainable basis, what would be the individual segment margins that we are looking at? Thank you. So, it is very difficult to give you specific comments on individual segment-wise margin going forward, because as you know that the input prices are really uh, uh, fluctuating very, very high. So, what we can only say is that we are trying to see how uh, good we can pass on those input price increases. So that we can maintain margin, but very difficult to say how we can increase or what will be maintaining in future. Yeah, uh, thanks. Sir. Just a concurrent question to that: uh, How much time lag does it take to uh, increase our product prices based on the input price increase normally? Yeah, so uh, depends on product to product. In some products where we don't uh, have uh, longer time orders, we, the pass on can happen fast. Some products we have. Quarterly orders, the pass on can happen a little bit later, but depends on product to product. But we try to pass on as soon as possible. Immediately we take the decision as soon as the price increases. We try to convince the customer and try to pass on. Thank you so much, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dushyant Mishra from Sage One Investment Managers. Please go ahead. All right. Good afternoon. Good evening. I just had a question that the previous participant just touched upon. Uh, you said that the capex is due to increase demand. Should we assume that clients have already approached you about utilizing your dietary outputs, or are we going to be doing a lot of business development on that front before we can start to see revenues? Yeah. So some of the clients have reached to us for the requirement. And in some of the cases, uh, we have developed the value-added products, and therefore, the customers is very keen to look at us supplying those value-added products. Understood. Okay. And the second question is: uh, 
So for, on an incremental basis, once all of this CapEx is done, at the end of the three-year cycle, what kind of captive consumption can we assume? Currently, we're utilizing 25% of our life sciences for specialty chemicals, and then 45% of pregnant people for nutrition. How will this change going forward? Uh, you are specifically talking about the existing products. There will not be much change. No, after the after this capex. After this, after this, uh, uh, it is very difficult to quantify right now. But our endeavor is always to keep uh, adding value to our existing products. But at the same time, uh, if there is a requirement of existing products, we don't we don't say no to customers. So both we will parallelly work. And we'll see how it turns out. And just one quick question. Has there been more traction on the CDMO front? Have we been able to see any more inquiries or customers coming us that way? Yes, there has been better traction in CDMO side, which I've mentioned in the speech also, both in pharmaceutical as well as in agrochemical segment. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hrithik from one of financial consultants. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Just one question. Uh, so in the uh, March an uh, analyst meeting, you mentioned that uh, we're looking to do a capex of 900 to 1,000 crores over FY22 to 24. So uh, uh, are we on track for that? Uh, and uh, also uh, with the increase in uh, demand, uh, do we look at uh, higher capex going forward? I think Chairman has already mentioned in his speech that all our growth plans are on track. So, so whatever we have talked in March, we are following very, very, very focused way. And as, so far, we can say we are on track. And and I hope we will be in a position to take it through the way we have planned. Okay. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neha Agarwal from Stage 1 Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for taking my question. So, uh, just want to touch upon a few points. One is for dietary things. Uh, while you did mention that there is some demand from the existing customers, at a broader level, uh, is it going to be the existing client base that we'll be migrating on? Or uh, we'll be getting into newer markets or uh, going from this line acquisition there. I think I've already mentioned it that we are looking at uh, as a global as a market. So if there are existing clients who who need our product, we will be definitely very happy to supply them. As well as we are looking at customer outside. As well as we are looking at value added products from marketing. So all the three areas we are working. We will see how the scenario turns out, and we will take the direction accordingly. So are the sales more institutional there, or is it that uh, typically happens through, say, a lot of distributor channels? No, we, we mostly work with uh, direct customers. Understood. Also, just one question on the life science part. Now, the margin expansion has been quite significant. Uh, could you give a split between, say, the price growth part versus the value growth part? I just want to understand how sustainable are these. So, so in, in Q4 as well as in FY21, we have grown both in volume as well as in price. So, the result which you see is because of both. As 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 I already said, that our new capacity which we added in FY20 has also come very handy to service that uh, increased demand. So that volume also has grown as well as the price has been favorable. So the result you see is result of both. So if I take the uh, blended numbers for entire year FI21 from the performer, can we expect similar margins to be maintained going forward? While you did mention about passing on prices and maintaining margins. Yeah, so it's very difficult to comment on quarter and quarter margin or EBITDA. But definitely we can say one thing that 
uh, our overall uh, FY22 performance should be better, uh, both in revenue as well as in EBITDA, uh, better than the FY21. That much we can definitely say, but what happens quarter one quarter very very difficult to comment on. Sure, that's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Thakur, the Motila Lotswal Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, so, uh, could you also comment on the ethanol vending program, which is uh, uh, extended by the government of India, and how do we see this benefiting to us? So, it, uh, as you know, that we have uh, the capacity of ethanol to produce. Uh, some capacity which we are reaching to EDP as well as to our other customers. We have not taken up any capacity extension there. So I don't see that there will be any increased supplies of EDP volumes what has been announced from our capacity right now. So we will be serving whatever we have customer and whatever volume we are currently servicing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. So my next question is on, uh, is on this diet in chemistry wherein, you know, Lakshmi Organics has a commendable market share in India. So as you said, uh, there's a lot of import substitution to be played out. Uh, but on, yeah, on the international side of this business, would you be catering more to the uh, CDMO side of the business or you feel uh, it would be a normal B2B arrangement? So both. I mean, uh, there will be CDMO opportunity on agrochemical side as well as pharma side. But also we have great opportunity on a lot of value added products. So that is what we are targeting also. Uh, beyond the existing domestic market. Okay. So, and given that there is some kind of a technology barrier to this part of the chemistry, uh, how do you see the competition shaping up? Because uh, if the space grows more profitable, then obviously it's bound to attract more competition. But how do you read the market then? So, as we have mentioned this point, that this, this chemistry is not easy. It's not easy to really any competitors to get in. There is a lot of barriers to this technology. And uh, we, uh, being the largest uh, producer in, of this technology, that is teaching technology, I think for us, it will be easier to multiply in terms of capacity. And that's why we have a plan for phase two as well. And having said so, we can't rule out any competition, but it's not easy in this kind of technology to, to get in so soon. Okay, fair enough. Because we, we, are, we, are, we are developing this technology in house. So, the value added product we are developing in house, the T team we are operating for many, many years. So, we have very high expertise in this area. Okay. So, there's a, there's a, it's a very broad chemistry in the sense that there are so many products you can uh, manufacture using this chemistry. Uh, so, what is the kind of a product bouquet that you are planning to like start with? So there is a broad chemistry, but but you know that there are uh, the basic building blocks are you know hardly six or eight, and then there are there are at least dozen of high volume, high value uh, intermediate. Of course, I can't speak specific. So those are the products we are already developing, which are required for pharmaceutical as well as agrochemical, and that's our long term plan. Okay, this is very helpful. Just one last question from my side on vitamin B3. Uh, so primarily, we are, uh, uh, which are target markets, so like domestic or uh, uh, sizable portion also comes from the international market? Uh, in vitamin B3, I think you missed my point in speech. Uh, uh, we have almost 95% of vitamin B3 is export. Our domestic supplies of vitamin B3 is hardly 5%, very small value. Mostly export. Oh all across the world. Okay. And, and uh, are there any capacity expansions, uh, particularly in this, uh, uh, this vitamin B3 category? Yeah, we continue to do that because uh, vitamin B3, we have grown uh, from very low level to this high level. We have already done the bottlenecking last year and we plan to do it maybe after one year more. So as the demand is growing, as we are entering into value-added segments like food and cosmetics, and pharma also now we are planning. I think we have to keep adding capacity, which we continue to do that. I have mentioned that already. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, this is very helpful and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prati Kothari from Unique CMS. Please go ahead. Uh, 
Hi, good evening and thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, in a recently published RHP, uh, there was this mention that our top five products contribute 70% of sales and maybe top 10 does 80. So if you can just, uh, would like your comment on the product concentration that we have. So, uh, our top five products, top 10 products contributes to, I think, 65-70% of our revenue. Yes. That's the way it is. Going forward, it will be uh, as concentrated as this. I mean, do you see any risk to this part, or are we working on uh, diversifying our shares from different products, or uh, how do we look at this number? So, if you see specialty chemical business, this is not a very high value product base, but they are they are high contributing products. So, so you will find the specialty product with a sales value of let's say ten or fifteen crore. But we definitely have those technologies, we can to have those products. So we are not hesitant to bring a new product uh, which has a size, with good size revenue and it fits into our technology base and existing facility. We would like to take those products. But there are plans to bring products like dipetyl derivative, etc., which are large value and agroactive, which are large value for future. So those are the so we we are having mix of that large value growth products as well as small revenue generating products with higher margin from the same base technology. So both are mixed, which we are targeting for future. Fair enough, sir. And if we look at a gross margin on an annual basis, it's almost same as last year. So a large part of our operating margin improvement has come via uh, maybe leverage or lower costs. Uh, so how much of this is sustainable? I mean, is a large part where we were able to cut costs due to COVID and some of it will come back? No, I think um, our our margins, which have improved in some segment of business, which has come from better volume as well as better price. Okay, fair enough. So, so operating leverage largely. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. And so last question, this exceptional uh, expense of 13 crores, if you can just uh, highlight the thing. Gosh, um, can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what certain uh, old uh, unusable assets which we have discarded during the So this is towards that. It's more exceptional than routine. Oh, okay. So you said write off of some older assets? Yeah, yeah. It's okay, fair enough, sure. Sure, thank you and congratulations on good performance. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rushab Shehzalan from Praveen Ratilal Share and Stock Brokers Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations. Just had two questions, both on the Daikitin front only. So, you know, the present revenue of uh, FI21, as I see it, is some. 3500 crores. So, just wanted to understand what percentage of revenue do we derive from ketene, diketene, and the diketene deri derivatives? Uh, it's very difficult to give that specific number as of today. Uh, but any approximate uh, ballpark number that uh, number of revenue and margin? As we said, we will be bringing the product in Q4. So, I'm sure it is not going to be significant. So. Again, it's very difficult to give that specific number. Okay, okay. And the second question is pertaining to the capex of uh, rupees 900 crores that you have planned for diketine over the coming three years. So, what percentage of this capex do you anticipate it is going to be, um, you know, funded through internal accruals and uh, what percentage through borrowings? Yes, sir, I will. Sorry, I think. I think we have misunderstood that we are, we are planning 900 crore for dietitian. Is that your thing? No. Uh, no, I mean, for this, I am talking about the entire capex. Entire capex, okay. Yeah. So I thought you were saying only dietitian. No, no, no. no I capex? just misspelled it. Yeah. Okay. So 900 crore, entire capex, uh, as we mentioned earlier also, that most of it uh, will be from internal accrual because we have a good cash situation going forward. Okay, so by most of it, can I assume that almost 60-65% will be from internal accruals only? Richard, yes, it's difficult to put a number around it, but, uh, because this entire amount is not coming in one year. So 
So, so we have set nine hundred for three years. As you would also notice that for next year we have set in the range of three hundred to three hundred fifty crores. If you look at our uh, cash operating cash, you would realize that we are generating sufficient cash. So it appears that we will be able to make it from internal accounts. But as the years go by, that we will know exactly. Okay. Okay. Fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, and congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranav Mukherjee from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, and congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is on your uh, nutrition and health solutions business. So, wanted to have at least a qualitative. So, view from you on how the margin, uh, I mean, the profitability has been in this businesses, business, uh, even the current scenario and uh, the sustainability of the thing going forward. So, nutrition segment uh, business, our products demand is stable. However, as I mentioned, that input prices are changing very drastically. You can see every 10 days, 15 days, price change is happening. And as as we I explained in the earlier uh, question that our endeavor is to pass on the price as much as possible. So uh, it's difficult to say how, what margins we will continue maintain quarter and quarter. But we we try to beat up the demand and we try to pass on the input price increase. So we see that demand is going to be stable or, or good, and that we try to service the whole demand. Sure, sir. So, uh, sir, if I uh, rephrase the question in a slightly different manner, wanted to understand from you, uh, given your uh, you know historical experience in the in this uh, vitamin B three B four segment, where has the uh, profitability been in the last uh, say one year in FY twenty one vis a vis your history? Is it on a higher side or is it at an average or lower than the earlier years? I think last FY21 has been good. I would not say uh, lower or better, but it has been good. We still expect the, uh, the better pricing in future, as we mentioned earlier also, because of the raw material availability of the Okay. Uh, any uh, is is there a possibility of also better profitability coming from you know value added risk that you had mentioned? Yes, you are right that uh, those uh, segments give us better pricing, and that is the reason we want to also have good product mix uh, of of those grades. But at the same time, we know that volumes of those grades are limited. So the feed is a ma major volume, but food, cosmetics, pharma, they are also growing. So we want to we want to take the major share there, and we are working for that. That that those. Those segments is better margin than prices. We are we are right. Okay, sir. So, uh, uh, can you throw some light on how the approval cycles are on these segments, uh, say pharma or cosmetics in your side, or from your customers? So, in cosmetics and food, we are already there in the market. We are applying to many customers. We are approved with several customers. What we are trying to do is enhance our market share. In terms of pharmaceutical segment, we are working to make uh, our plant FDA auditable, US FDA auditable, and I uh, yes, there is a approval process of almost I think 12 to 16 months. But that that's what is the is the timeline, and in fact, we are working on that. Once we are ready, we will we will offer the products to the customers maybe in next one one and a half year time. Okay, sir. Any color you can give on, you know, overall the next three, four years, uh, any proportion in the overall vitamin, uh, I mean, the nutrition health solution segment that you have in mind, which is uh, that will contribute the pharma, food, the higher margin product. So we are we are actually targeting all the segments. Uh, by targeting uh, food, pharma, and cosmetics, it does not mean we are not targeting animal uh, in, uh, feed also. So as, as I mentioned, we are increasing our capacity uh, because being market uh, leaders, we have to continue servicing all our customers. So so you will not see the significant percentage change because our overall volumes are good. But yes, these segments are 
our uh, market share we are targeting to be uh, to be improving going forward thank you i would request mr mukherjee to rejoin the queue the next question is from the line of ranveer singh from sindhi security please go ahead yeah thanks for taking my question so one clarity in your presentation you have mentioned uh, that uh, life science came to business on year on year basis price has been stable uh, yet we have uh, margin has doubled so uh, is it because uh, we have increased the price uh, of end product despite that the material prices has been stable yeah there is there is a opportunity of profit condition we try to take price increase uh, which has happened in the past so you are right okay or or apart from this uh, do we have other products also in this segment where we have seen uh, uh, significant increase in prices uh, so apart from this specific case i mean uh, yeah no no there is efficacy is a major input for this kind of products of, of course the uh, raw material prices of course is going up as you know uh, but in this uh, products efficacy is the key raw material okay so this 18% kind of ebitda margin uh, should we take it uh, forward for fy 22 23 or uh, better than this because, because this year we saw a lot of volatility in price some benefit of pricing so uh, in this scenario uh, your of uh, you know input of the question as i as i have mentioned as in earlier question also that very very difficult to give any guidance on our margin part because uh, raw material prices are not in our control market conditions are not in our control however we will definitely try to see that our overall performance as i mentioned should be better than last year Uh, Ranveer, uh, I would like, uh, want to add. We had said it last time also. In this particular life science chemical business, it is better to see the absolute uh, amount that we are making. So it's always better to track the absolute amount rather than the percentage margins. Because here, the sometimes the the value of the sales changes because of the absolute price. So it is better to track the absolute uh, value of the product. Okay. Okay. Okay, that that fine. And uh, uh, why uh, I was asking about margin front because you know for three hundred or three fifty crore kind of capex uh, for FY twenty two, and I believe that sixty three crore we have in work in progress. That uh, is it uh, part of that three hundred three fifty crore or sixty three uh, crore in uh, work in progress is related to earlier capex. It's part of three hundred fifty crore. Okay, so uh, if the margin on margin front, even we see currently what uh, kind of profit we are making every year, and we have a long term, uh, you know, uh, uh, capex plans also for 900 or 1000 crore. Every year we are making 300 to 50 crore. So any risk margin, any you know, uh, down, uh, you know, contraction in margin would actually will affect our repayment uh, uh, of debt. What currently we are talking about. Uh, debt would be reduced. So, uh, uh, am I taking it in the right way, or you you are uh, confident that either volume or margin will improve further, so we'll have enough cash uh, for this uh, program? Let me excuse me. Sorry, our net debt as of thirty first March is only four thirty one crore. Our debt is about two point seven crore. Times and our debt equity is about twenty two. So, from the balance sheet side, if you see. We are very very comfortable. So, and we have uh, in the earlier part of the call also explained that currently the, the cash generation is very healthy, and we expect to build the capacities for the internet. So, we do not see any problem. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks a lot, and all the best. That's it for my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ronil Dalal from Indian Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. So my question was actually that uh, compared to your uh, large domestic uh, competitor in exiles, you have been able to perform significantly better on margins. So 
Is there any reason behind that in terms of pretty more backward integrated the technology, larger scale of operations? Uh, is there any reason for that? Yeah, all that participated is, is not the reason. Our scale, our backward integration, our spread of customers, our spread of geography, and uh, our strength in procuring the raw material at right time, at right price, all that humility makes the impact. Right. And uh, in terms of the backward integration, uh, what... what uh, what uh, to what level would you be backward integrated in your products, like especially ethanol, acetic acid? No, so in terms of an acetic and aldehyde, there is not much of backward integration there. So the acetic acid uh, is the key raw material. But yes, the, the right. scale of operation and the entire utility, which is all in house, and the effectiveness of utilization of utility, cost optimization, those are the factors. And as, as I mentioned about our spread of customers and geography, we place our products across the world. Right, right. And uh, so, so you were mentioning in cost, you were saying that uh, the saving is because of, uh, you'll have some uh, in, in-house source of power or something or? No, so uh, our, in Gujarala, yes, we have our own factory power plant. But uh, we use uh, business excellence six sigma tech tools and techniques to continuously working on optimization of efficiencies in all our products. And in large volume products, even the smaller efficiency improvement makes a huge impact. So, so that's a continuous process of improving the uh, utility consumption, improving the norms. All those things are uh, a continuous experience which we do in all of our products. So then the ethanol part you were mentioning? Ethanol, uh, we produce ethanol for EBT program and for some specialty ethanol. So there we are already uh, selling to, to blending program as well as specialty ethanol. And some portion of ethanol for our own consumption, we, we import. You import, okay, okay. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Bira from Abacus Asset Manager. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, just a small question. Uh, in terms of the month on month changes that I have seen in the presentation on uh, slide number 27, to be specific. For example, if I see employee benefit expenses for one month is 35 crores, but for the subsequent two months is 49 crores. So sequentially, something is isn't, something is a little bit off, I believe. Uh, which slide are you on? 20? So slide, slide number 27. Uh, one second, and I'll just see exactly what you're asking. The slide like one month and two months is uh, given as a breakup. Oh, okay, okay. One month. Oh, yeah. So oh, one month and two months. Uh, okay. So, yeah. So, and you are referring to the other expenses, I believe. So, employee benefit expenses. So, 35 crores and 40 crores. Even the EBITDA is 83 crores for one month, and for the subsequent two months collectively is 120 crores. Okay, okay. So, actually, you must see always a full quarter. So uh, it's, it's a better way to see us what the month on month is got a correct uh, uh, indication, and particularly when the year is uh, it's an year end also. So uh, the a, a month on month expenses here uh, particularly, I'm just trying to see what number you are referring to, so, so that I can actually read it. So the complete presentation, it's slide number fifty. Uh, yeah, you are say, referring one plus two, yeah? okay. Yeah, one plus two, so thirty-five and forty. Okay, all right. So because you must also consider in mind that uh, this one month was also the cutoff period for the purpose of uh, the uh, for, for the purpose of the uh, demerger. So a lot of right. true true of impact has come in this one month. So actually, this one month can be somewhat uh, slightly abnormality would have uh, because still. Uh, in December, business was uh, carrying on on a continuing basis. When the demerger came in the month of January, 
So certain true ups has taken place. So this one month is not actually a very correct representation of an ongoing business. Because at the time of the departure, certain true ups have happened. So they are more one off in the nature. Sure, sure. Fair point. And sir, in terms of the trade receivables, uh, the number is quite uh, big for us at the March ending. So can you throw some light there, sir? Uh, we are picking up the trade receivable from. Oh, okay, all right. So actually, this is uh, uh, trade receivable is higher this time because, uh, as we have explained earlier, that in license capitals and all these elements, we are enjoying very good, uh, very good uh, prices. So because of all this price increase, the receivable uh, part has also increased. So it's reflecting from. Also Members of the management, you may go ahead, please. We thank you all for joining us this conference today. Uh, if you have any further questions, we will be happy to apply for that. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Jubilant, in sorry, on behalf of Jubilant in Gravia Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.